To the calling of the mystic awakening. Digging is really symbolic of the uncovering that you have to do in your mind. There is a lot of uncovering. We can't we can't really skip over it. We can't say that that you know we can just click our heels together or twinkle our noses like in bewitched and we'll we'll know the kingdom of heaven. It's it seems to be a process of digging and exposing, but but once you start to realize how important the digging is, then you can dig it. I mean, <laughs> really, to use a phrase from the 60s, you know, you, you kind of get into the, the attraction to it, like, oh yeah, this is a good use of time. And that's why, you know, we only have two guidelines here at the monastery in our surrounding houses, and it's no private thoughts and no people pleasing, because it's that exposure. We all see how valuable that is. And we all have to have practice in learning not to take it personal. Holy Spirit's not taking anything personal. It could be anything. You know, imagine somebody who's in a, in a prison cell, they've been there for, they're serving a life term, and they supposedly, they seemingly were a mass murderer, and they, they just kill people, and they dug graves for them, and they bury them. 20, 30, 40, it, you, you start to realize that the Holy Spirit has such a pure vision of who we truly are, that there are no lies, it doesn't matter the magnitude of what seems to have been done wrong, it's that there are no lies that that light can't dispel. And so, that's kind of an extreme example, but when you're living in community, you have a lot of opportunity to practice overlooking the error. You can't do it personally. You have to have the strength of the Holy Spirit to look past the defiled altar, Jesus says, to the light of the atonement. That's the Holy Spirit's function. The Holy Spirit has only one function, to look past the defiled altar to the light of the atonement, overlooking the error. The Holy Spirit looks not to effects. The Holy Spirit looks not to the images of the world. You know, we can't anthropomorphize the Holy Spirit and make the Holy Spirit into a human figure. You know, like, God is watching us, God is watching us from a distance. You know, no, God is not watching from a distance, and the Holy Spirit is not watching. The Holy Spirit doesn't see people and, and plants and things and guns and bombs and and politics and all the things, those are all inventions of the ego that are just projected. They're just concepts that are projected onto a movie screen and believed real. And the more you're identified with the movie, the more it's, it's really difficult. It's hard to, it's impossible to be at peace when you're identified with the concepts and the images. But the Holy Spirit, you know, it says in A Course in Miracles, the Holy Spirit looks not to effects. The Holy Spirit knows that the cause of all these effects of the world, of all these shattered images, is not real. The ego made the world. God didn't create it. The ego made up the world. The ego uses the world and the images of the world to keep the mind trapped and guilty. And until you can look with the Holy Spirit and go deep enough inside and see that the the ego is not real, so that means all the effects, the seeming effects of the ego, can't be real either. They don't, these effects don't have a real source. Who we are, you know, the Son of God, the Christ has a source, but these effects have no real source. So those are the divine, we could say, metaphysics of forgiveness, is you keep exposing, you dig and dig and dig, like, like they were all digging there, all the little gears, and then finally you clink, you unite, and you come together in these beautiful blazing recognitions that really are, are light. They, are, they really aren't perceptual joinings at all. So it's more of going into the light in your mind. It's not a matter of trying to join bodies. We've tried that. We've tried to join bodies and it never works. <laughs> we find that out over and over again. But we don't have to stop there. We don't have to be depressed or disappointed because the bodies never seem to join. We find that true joining is in purpose. It's the light in our mind. And 
so it's like, it's like hooray for the uncovering, hooray for the exposing, hooray for whatever, music, movies, relationships, meditation, experientials, diet work, you know, hooray for everything that helps us expose the error, expose these false concepts and beliefs. Because that is absolutely necessary. You, you don't approach truth directly, you approach it through negation. You just simply discover everything that the truth is not, until you finally go, aha! <laughs> and then the truth dawns in your awareness. But you will not approach it, uh, you know, just by affirming uh, the truth. You know, affirmations, you know, have their place, but, but the Course in Miracles is saying you have to remove the obstacles to the awareness of love's presence. So good! And, and for a lot of people that doesn't sound like a really good romantic reason to be in a relationship. Do you promise to remove all the obstacles in your, in your mind, so help you God? I do. And do you take this partner, not to take this partner, not to possess them, not to control them, not to manipulate them, not to try to fix them, but simply to allow the Holy Spirit to remove all the obstacles in your mind, so help you God? I do. And you're married. You are married in purpose. And there can be a more sense of lightness, a sense of laughter, a sense of, yes, you can actually have fun with relationships when you have the right context for the relationship. If you're going, if you've got the wrong context, oh, it's, it's going to be a mess. It's going to, it's going to, no matter how much ooh-la-la -la <laughs> the ego puts in there, you know, it is going to, it's, you're going to have a fall. And like Humpty Dumpty, it will be a great fall, because the expectations will just build up and build up. And what are we really talking about when we're talking about these expectations? We're talking about God substitute expectations. That's what's underneath the expectations. Oh, I'm miserable, I'm unworthy of love, I don't like the single model that I am, so I'm going for a couple models. <laughs> I'm trading in, trading in the single model for a couple model, and even the couple model may give you a little bit of ooh la la for a little while, but it's going to be the same fall, because the single model and the couple model are the mask. <laughs> and even, lest I say, the group model, you know, when people are so frightened about cults and sects, Sex, it's what it is, it's, it's this sense that a group self-concept can take the place of a miserable little individual self-concept. Or, even the couple concept can get kind of boring after a while, so let's do an orgy concept. You see, it's always the ego has got something more, more pizzazz, more stimulation, more excitement, and it still doesn't get you there. It's still the same trap, it's still the same wheel of time, the same karmic wheel. It just spins around and around. So. But we're onto it. We're onto we it. are awakened.